Where the hoes at? Specifically, so I know where not to go. What are you talking about? Where the hoes at? I said, yo, where the hoes at? And he told me, and I said, good, staying away from there. You just make yourself look stupid. Are you, do you believe me now? No. Once upon a time, and I heard that I was sucking. You came from a bitch who should have won a bottle in my face, bump, ass, sack, rack, speckle, shack, hype, jury on the trash, like, I've been listening last night. Get him with that good, good, make a nigga. How sexy does a uh, like you're you're gasping for air, you're congested. There's nothing sexy, you can't moan in a sexy but way. But in Dorsey, in you feel better. I would feel horrible trying to fuck Darth Vader. <laughs> Turn off the light, put <laughs> Do some, uh, what do you call it? Role play. <laughs> Put on that mask, baby. I just want to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't work. If your lady's singing, I don't feel good, and I think that maybe if you, you know, link my tunties, I might feel a little better, that you shouldn't oblige. I mean, do you tell your partner, nah, you're done, you sick. Stay uh, away from me, or do you, listen, do you reciprocate? I want you to do me a favor right now, babe. Okay? Mm -hmm. Real talk. Close your eyes for a minute. Okay. Nope. Pretend you're sleeping, and then in the midst of you sleeping, you hear, Can I suck your dick? <laughs> because she's sick. It doesn't work. You're not going to get up all of a sudden because your wife, who sounds like a fucking man, says, I want to suck your That's dick. That's not true. <laughs> in what not lifetime true. is it not true? Because last time because I Because there was one time I was sick, and dude was like, Yo, you sound not sexy. I was like, What? Because he was fucking gay. <laughs> That's what it was. But, but let me reverse it on him, RG. But John, <laughs> if she doesn't ask and you wake up and your penis is in her mouth, do you stop her because she's sick? No, I, I'm just saying she's not saying anything, so I don't. Germs hear have been transferred at that point, buddy. Your your fate is sealed. <laughs> <laughs> Sexually transmitted bronchitis. <laughs> So here's the question, if you can't breathe, if you're all snotted up and congested, are you giving your girl head? Because I think he like went around and around and around and around, right? And then, huh? So what happened? If she wants it, yeah. Okay, cool. And I'm she's willing to die. Awesome. <laughs> That's beautiful. That vapo for put that shit all on my chest and let's go. question that the vote shouldn't have been as close as it was had they positioned had they positioned things properly we can even take it back to hillary you guys put up hillary once they didn't want it they let the first black man be president before they let hillary be president and you put her up again why like why but they won't get tulsi gabbard right like tulsi? It, I, I hate tulsi gabbard That's what well we she hate. hates you and too I you like you like trash. Like I did want to touch back a little bit so, where we were talking about how long it takes to, to count the votes. I have your solution. Put all the votes into a Chick-fil-A fucking drive through I guarantee they'll be counted by the end of the day. And it'll be their pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Everybody gets eliminated. Okay. 
No, I hold. So I'm going to put you on blast right now because it's very important. So what you're telling me is you waited to go last to drop this super duper knowledge that would have saved us a lot of time of our I you just, wanted to, I just wanted to get I just wanted to get the feeling of the room. I just wanted to get the feeling of the room. I wanted to see where everybody was at. So you no, know what? But real quick, Johnny says something right. He goes, apparently you're a Nazi if you vote right or red and you're a Marxist right. if you vote left. Sadly it's getting more and more extreme when it's stemming from anger when mad go to the extreme. You're absolutely right. best city. Bitch, in Austin it costs $40 to take an Uber across the street. First of all, bitch, I'm not even responsible for that. That's San Francisco. What? San Francisco, why do y'all straight up not have a middle class? People are either thriving from app development or they're homeless. New Orleans, it's great to see that you're not having this discussion from underwater. I will cut you. Bitch, Philly is the best city. You're the reason that Will Smith is out here slapping people. Well, if he was raised in Chicago, he would have shot Chris Rock. Bitch. Hey, come on guys, let's not Let's not be like this Denver, are you high, bitch? Why, yes, thank you Hey, San Francisco, is the house from Full House still there? Yep, you can buy it for $37 million Bitch, for $37 million I could buy all of Detroit What, bitch? Bitch, you're like if Gotham was taken over by the Joker Detroit, for real, bitch, Sarah McLaughlin should do a video raising money for you Very funny, bitch Hi, I'm Sarah McLaughlin Bitch, get the fuck out of here I'm sorry, Miss Jackson Sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, but that's how I feel. Audrey, tell me what a oh. quick. that the day by day ruler can't be too wrong. Miss Jackson, my intentions were good. I wish I could. I ain't trying to tell you what to do, but try to play. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 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 oh shit. So <laughs> the fact that he knows these questions. <laughs> For that quadri. Have you ever forced yourself to throw up? <laughs> and why? <laughs> Wait, let me rephrase the question. Hashtag. And, and how? Hashtag no gaggers. <laughs> that was not set up. You saw this film. Yeah, right. Okay, sure. This is a, these are just random questions by you. So, yes. Why? Because I felt like I threw it. Okay. And don't do it. I was going to do better with that or not. How with a toothbrush? All right, so you, you were able to. She, now, in the video, she did clarify that she can gag on reflex, which is an even bigger talent. Save my own life. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, yes, I'll save my life. If I just want to have fun, then I don't feel anything. <laughs> now y'all know what I went through on Thursday on Tuesday. Shit. <laughs> it was so crazy that obviously you forgot what day it was. <laughs> Yes. We're not gonna talk about that. Was it the bristle side or was it the the point side? Well, that still was probably sideways. I don't know. Here we go again. Second time for the night. Oh! <laughs> 
What's up, happy people? Welcome, uneducated heathens. It's it's time to get into some fun shit tonight. I know normally most of our shows are very serious. We're going to have some fun with this one tonight. Uh, as always, I'm your boy, Frank, your host, and I'm here with my brother from another mother, a.k.a. my hetero life mate, a.k.a. sometimes when we're drunk, we do weird shit together. Miko, how you doing, buddy? Max. <laughs> Good, How's it going, man? man? How are you? Good, I'm good fantastic good. yourself. Yeah, man. I cannot complain. Um, just as a fair warning to everybody, uh, I have been partaking in festivities today. Uh, it is uh, well, tomorrow's see, my see, daughter's. You should never partake in festivities when you're doing a show, Frank. That's ridiculous. Yeah, but it's my kid's birthday tomorrow, so it's an excuse to drink excessively. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so tonight. Our topic is when a Greek and an Egyptian god meet, when they merge, when they come together in the unity of everything, we get alchemy. (sighs) Pew! But first, the news. Nico, take it away, sir. So, Frankie, how you feel, man? Uh, World War III, almost, yesterday. I don't know if you saw some of the pictures. Yeah, bro. Like the G20, they look tense. Yeah. They look like they were about to make decisions. Thank God that every, like, cooler heads prevailed. I still think it's bullshit. I still think it's a Russian miss- missile and they're trying to cover it up. But that's that's intense, brother. So, yeah, it really is. That is such a sketchy thing. Not only, I mean, a fucking rocket hit, right? So, I mean, that's in, in by itself is sketchy. But, Super. <laughs> but the fact that it was Poland that got hit, a country that's not even involved in this situation, the, the Russia-Ukraine situation, that's even more wild because... Poland is NATO. They're a NATO country. So if they get hit, retaliatory measures have to go into place, I feel like, you know, one way or another. And I think I think at this point, I don't know if we can sanction Russia anymore. And just for the for the sake of the conversation, I do think it was a much a Russian rocket. I think it hit. Um, I think it missed. I don't think it was intentional, but I do think oh, it was definitely, a Russian yeah. rocket um, for them to say that it was uh, a Poland or no, what did they say? It was a Ukrainian air defense missile that, that yeah. went off. They're using our technology. Like, those those weapons don't miss. You know so here's I mean? the thing. The same as uh, S-300 missile that they have from the old Soviet era, which is Russian. But the crazy part for me is that Ukraine is denying it, which is weird because the entire world is saying that uh, if they, even if it's Ukraine, it doesn't matter. They were trying to shut down a missile. It was still Russia's fault. But Ukraine today said that they are almost positive that it wasn't them. So no, really here, Russia still uses uses that type of missile. So the S three hundred, yeah, but the S three hundred is an anti. So so here's the weird part. I don't think it's an S three hundred either. I think it's fake. I think it's that one K one caliber, or whatever crap it is, because the S three hundred. Uh so here's this is facts, and you you guys can Google it. So the S three hundred is a surface to air missile to intercept missiles, right? But it has on board a self-destruct. So if it misses, it doesn't hit like a building. So it if it misses or if it goes out of course, it self-destructs. Right. I didn't know this. I learned this today from a Greek general. So I'm telling you, it's it seems very, very fishy because a U.S. intelligence officer right away came out and said, uh, anonymous, obviously, that it was definitely um, a Russian rocket and then now they're backpedaling. I think Russia... Back channels was like, hey, look, we fucked up. This is not what we wanted to do. Let's not go into World War Three. And I think the U.S. is like, bet. Yeah, I mean, it's the easiest answer. It's the easiest way out of it. You know, Ukraine's probably like, fuck you guys. <laughs> but <laughs> but well, Ukraine's it is kicking ass anyway, bro. They, they, they don't need it. No, it's the Viking DNA. We've gone over this a million times. Uh, I do want to say shout out to Goose and Audrey and the Stars, New York City. Hello, everybody. Appreciate you ah, being here. Stars is here. Yeah, our what buddies. Up, up? All right, cool. 
Um, I'm vibrating somewhere over here. What's going on? Okay, no, never mind. That was my drunk wife texting me that her kid's asleep. Yay! I love it. Yeah, man. Uh, we were drinking tequila all day. You know, it's just kind of happened. Um, but yeah, World War Three. World War Three bad. Um, I think it's inevitable to be honest with you, but World War Three still bad. I think so too. But but hey, I need you to close your eyes, right? Let's do this experiment. Close your eyes for Wait, one second. You want me to do this for real? Yeah, yeah, for real. Close your eyes. Okay. All right, I'm close. They're closed. And I want you to think of a superhero cape. Okay. The only person that could save us from World War Three, and he's running for president for 2024. <laughs> <laughs> You can't even keep it together. That's great. Uh, so your boy's running in 2024. Thoughts? Yeah. Um, look, I have a... I have a different opinion of... I'm trying to think how to word this. I have a different opinion of Donald Trump. I don't hate Donald Trump, but at the same it time, do I, but I, do I think he's the person we need in the office? That's a whole other answer. You know what I mean? And I think we might have... Did you do you see that, Nico? Do we have a guest a guest that wants to say something? Yeah, I don't. Uh, All right, we'll patch him through. Yeah, let's go. Patch him through. I love it. So the thing is, finish your finish your point because it was a good. Point. I, I'm waiting for the guest to say what they need to say, or to come mm. on and say. Yeah, I'm missing it. I don't see it on the comments. All right, we'll we'll continue when it pops off. We'll 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 address it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a special guest that we've had before, not to spoil it, but Alex Jones wanted to come on and say something about this whole thing. Oh wait, oh, I, oh there you go. Nick, Nick, Frank, Frank, can, can can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Alex. Hear you. You All I want to say is this is a wonderful. I, I just want to say that uh, it's a wonderful day in America. We're going to be saved again. We're going to Mars. He said he's going to plant the flag. He said he's going to make us prosperous. He's going to make us strong again. I, I just want to say that the, the lawsuits, those are gone. World's going to be great again. We're going to get the, we're going to get the space cadet out of office. Um, gentlemen, I love what you do. Um, God, quick, God bless United States go, America Alex. and God bless dictator Trump. Alex, before you go, I do have a question. Can I ask a question? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Is Trump going to plant the flag on Mars himself? Because I feel like that would have an uh, impeccable message. I've got it on good accord that he's going to actually <laughs> kidnap Hillary. He's going to fly her up there with him. He's going to plant her down, and he's going to plant the flag into her. But don't share that. That's private information only for the uneducated heathen fans, okay? All right. Double check. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. You have a great night, and stay bunkered up, buddy. Hey, you guys continue to do amazing things. It was amazing being with you guys. Appreciate you. Always, always a pleasure, <laughs> sir. <laughs> there you go. There, there you have it, folks. That uh, is our boy, our boy, Alex Jones. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, would like be I some said. Shit if Alex Jones actually sued us. That would be <laughs> I think it would be excellent because I would parlay to actually come on the show, go on the show with yeah. him, which I think we'd have a great show. Absolutely. That would be hilarious. Um, but, yeah, no. So, Donald Trump, again, I've always been a fan of policy wise. I think he did very well for us as a country. Our economy was excellent. Um, but like I said, not the greatest unifier, not the not your typical leader. Right. A good leader, not a great leader in the sense of a good leader as uh, he was able to get shit done, but he really didn't give a fuck about who he had to step on or who he had to smack out the way to get it done, which it has its time and its place, I feel like. I feel like America has turned on him, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. Like, from a neutral point, I thought he was great as a president. I think he did. A, I, I don't have any issues with him, but I'm right. saying at the moment right now, I don't think even Republicans will vote for him. No. Mm-mm. I don't think so. so. I think that's why we're going to get, you know, I did hear something funny. So I was listening to Tim Pool actually, before okay, we came okay. on. And he was like, look, like yeah, Tim, he's very down the middle, which I appreciate. Yeah, right? I like Tim Pool. Yeah, yeah. So he was saying that uh, if the Democrats want to pull the 14th Amendment for the Insurrection Act to prevent him from running, they then the Republicans should sue uh, and call it the 14th Amendment 
for Kamala Harris and Joe Biden for May 29th when they burnt down St. St. Joseph's, I think it is, the, the church, and when they ripped the barricades yeah, yeah. around the White House. No. He's saying he's saying it wouldn't get anywhere, like he knows that, but just to kind of prove a point is, is how he Here's my thing. It. It's well, we're at a time where things are getting a little more serious. Right. And I don't want to take a serious tone, but we're at a time where things are very serious. And right. and and I know. I know I'm going to I'm going to get I'm going to get some heat for this but I know that the congressional hearings about the insurrection were bullshit but a yeah. lot of shit came out but a lot of shit came out from that Frank that he did a lot of dumb shit he, he the, the conversations that he had just with his vice president showed that I, at no point did he give a fuck about somebody's life and for me that's You're crossing the line now we're, Trump Trump yeah 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 no I agree no now my thing is like you could be upset about the votes. I mean, he went to every court possible with people he appointed, and mm-hmm. he lost. And now, whether you know, there's ways to fix this stuff. We've talked about elections. You know what I mean? It's sad that today, after a, um, how long a week now, we finally found out that the House is taken by the by the Republicans. That's embarrassing. Yes, we need to fix our laws. There's definitely something fishy there. But what he did after January sixth, to me. It was it was enough for me to be like, hey, look, you you had to run four years. Great. In history, they're going to speak very highly of you. The fact you had the Abrams Accords, you brought peace in the Middle East. Russia, for the first time in 12 years, didn't attack anybody. You you spoke to <laughs> Kim Jong. You, you did OK, buddy. You did OK. And, and I'm telling you, I think history will smile upon some of the stuff he did. But it's time for him to step away. The, yeah. the petty attacks on Yunkin and... That stupid attack on the, the sanctimonious and all that, Wait, that okay. is dumb. It, it was kind of funny. The sanctimonious is great, but sure. the, I think it was hilarious. You call him the Satan too. Yeah, no, which is great. But I mean, honestly, DeSantis is. You're probably looking at the next president if DeSantis. Is I think so too. You know, but I you know, one thing do. I like. One thing I like. I didn't see his response of it. Can you pull that actually? I know that's on the fly. I apologize, but oh, he know, did. He did. I saw that. I didn't see it. Yeah. So, but anywho, um, thank you, sir. Uh, is Vic the goat? Vic is goat. Goat Vic, right now. Vic. Vic is Vic is our young Jamie. He's just he's just Vic though. He's our young Jamie, and I, I appreciate it so very much. But my thing about DeSantis, DeSantis said he was going to finish out his run as governor, and then yeah. possibly pursue it. I don't know if the if the GOP is going to let him do that um, because I think they don't have anybody else to really put in the in the presidential election. Well, presidential um, election already causing division within the GOP as to who should lead the party. Terry Parker continues our live team coverage from West Palm Beach, where Trump supporters are gathering. And Terry, the pending announcement from Trump is already getting reaction from Governor Ron DeSantis, yes, yeah, who hear. could also enter the race for president. That's right. Governor DeSantis has not said anything ruling a possible run out, and he is fresh off his crushing defeat of his Democratic challenger. So he was going around the state today. He did have a press conference. And of course, reporters asked him about what uh, former President Trump has been saying about him. And we also did speak to a Trump supporter tonight who weighed in on what she thought with Trump leveling these criticisms and attacks on the man who possibly could be another GOP favorite. Let's listen. All that's just noise. And really what matters is, are you leading? Are you getting in front of issues? Uh, Are you delivering results for people? And are you standing up for folks? And if you do that, then none of that stuff matters. When I first heard him, he had a little snippet about DeSantis. Well, again, you have to think that he does, he is transparent. He says what he thinks. And that's the end of it. <laughs> and supporters out here along Southern Boulevard, we are midway um, all, all across the Intracoastal, going uh, toward Mar-a-Lago there in Palm Beach. Supporters gathering here with their big truck. <clears throat> so here's my uh, my hot take and to a comment Vic said, if they were smart, they would combine forces and get guaranteed 12 years. But here's like, I, that's actually hilarious, but here's my thing, right? The, the thing with Trump is that he's unelectable, man. Like, it's not because people used to think that Trump was the only one to go against everybody, uh, that he's going to be the one that, you know, save us all. And then you got DeSantis, who, by the way, by the way, 
Flip Miami Dade County. Right. That's hard. Right. Dude, they, people like it, them. Bro, that is hard. Like, like I don't know how it's, he did that. That was crazy a, to me. That's the first time they be well, Miami Dade has flipped since I can remember. But um going to what Vic said, if they're smart, they combine forces, get a grant to you 12 years, what you just touched on. I I think that's theoretically, yes, I understand, right? But I think if you put Trump with DeSantis, you're taking away from DeSantis at that point because Trump is too polar polarizing. And don't forget, just humanity, right? Just just humanity, real quick. If you and I don't care if you like him or not, but hearing Mike Pence tell the stories about what happened during that time, Bro. And Mike Pence is a conservative as fuck. Yeah, you know he's... what I mean. Like he, that dude wouldn't even have dinner with a woman that's not his wife. No. <laughs> We're talking about like mega conservative, you know. But like you know, he he he. They were talking about a conversation they had on the phone, and I was like, Jesus Christ. He was basically calling not to find out if he's okay, like if he's still going to find a way to alter the votes. And Mike Pence is like, I'm angry. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. he stopped by the guy. But the thing is, Mike Pence is a seasoned, seasoned, you know, politician. Right. DeSantis will turn around and tell him to suck a dick. And, and I'm telling you right now, it's, don't forget, he's still. I don't think he was a SEAL, but he was part of a SEAL team. I don't know exactly what. This no, he was, he was. He was. He was a JAG lawyer. He was a naval lawyer. Is what he okay. was. Okay. Yeah, he served. He was, yeah, he was in the Navy for a few years. He was a JAG lawyer, and then I believe he was the lawyer for the SEAL teams. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I believe he was the lawyer for the SEAL teams. Uh, <laughs> but he served. Lawyer. He's. Go ahead. Have, oh, go ahead, Vic. Yeah, go ahead and play that video. <laughs> I think you got a first plate. Oh. Oh no, he got mad I said that. Yeah, He's, no. Do you dick? I know my bad Vic. I know you know how to push play. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't ever disrespect young Jamie like that. I know, bro. Are, I'm gonna get are, slapped. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, I see movement. An announcement of some of the less than flattering comments he has made about you. Well, you know, one of the things I've learned, like learned in this job, is um, uh, when you're do when you're leading, when you're getting getting things done. Yeah, you take incoming fire. That's just the nature of it. Uh, I roll out of bed in the morning. I've got corporate media outlets that have a spasm just the fact that I'm getting up in the morning, and it's <laughs> a and this is just what's happened. I don't think any governor got attacked more, particularly by corporate media, than me over my four-year term. And yet, I think what you, what you learn is all that's just noise. And really what matters is, are you leading? Are you getting in front of issues? Uh, are you delivering results for people? And are you standing up for folks? And if you do that, then none of that stuff matters. And, and that's what we've done. We focused on results and leadership. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I would just uh, tell people to go check out the scoreboard from last Tuesday night. Uh, the fact of the matter <laughs> is. Nick, you can cut it there. It's six minutes long. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, you know, the fact of the matter. Wow, though. He, he yeah. went in on him hard. Yeah, bro. He's he's saying he's, he basically called Trump a single person news source. Like, bro, like you're going to talk shit. You're going to say whatever you're going to say. But if you remember, that's what that's what Trump ran on before. Right. In 2016, yeah. he just he just basically shut everybody up. And DeSantis, I don't think you're going to really do that. Be able to do that with. him. No, man, he's right, too. Don't forget, we got walloped. Now we like the Republicans got walloped in these in these uh, elections. If you think winning the House by a couple of seats is a victory when you were expecting a red tsunami, like they said. And yeah, it's a lot a, of his characters. He chose sprinkle. a lot of horrible characters. Yep. Yeah, and that's what – yeah, he started, Vic said he starts with a flip in all the stats in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I'm, but, I'm just saying. But, like, can, can we get a little happier? Like, you have your drink? Oh, yeah. Oh, Do you have your drink? Yeah. Let's cheer. And another. You know what's happening? You and know another. What's happening? 
Oh, I like the it. World, I like it. The, I have a the World Cup. The World Cup, baby. The World Cup. But 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 can we take a break? When we talk about the World Cup, I need a break. You know what it is? And I'm going to do something that I know Vic is not going to be happy, but I'm going to need Vic to come in because Vic is my – Vic gave me the shirt, just so we're clear. Football is life. Yeah, so, Vic, so our, get on. I don't want to – Our young get on. Jamie, our magician in the background, our Edward Norton – a Hugh Jackman magician. I think it was Hugh Jackman magician movie. Hugh Jackman. Wow. Was it Hugh Jackman? Wow. Wow. I, mean, I know Victor's a good looking. Well, Hugh Jackman, Hugh Jackman was in. Hugh Jackman was in the wow. Prestige. Yeah. Whatever. Jackman it's still, was the it's still Prestige still, with. Um, no, 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 no. You're not gonna talk. You're gonna show your face. Come in. Show, show your pretty mug. Yeah. Let me see your oh, mug. You probably got. Hold on. I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming. coming. Balls. I had the. You beautiful son of a bitch. Usa, Usa, Usa. <laughs> Yo, word up. It, it's World Cup time. Usa. Yeah, I'm, I'm supporting Usa until I can't support them anymore. Um, Do they have the worst yeah, kit? This World Cup. So, <laughs> yes, yes, they have the worst kit. No, <laughs> their kit this year is fire. No, their kit this year is fire. No, their kit wait, is wait. fire. Wait, wait. Did you just said the USA kit is fire? Yeah, this year? You haven't seen, Have you seen it? You saw the World Cup kit, right? Uh, yes. You know it, got, it, it got voted the other. You don't like kit. it? What the players hated. The players already, they had requested for a new one. You got to read the news, this? buddy. What the fuck do they know? Bro, it's <laughs> disgusting. It's <laughs> ugly as shit. <laughs> it looks like they robbed Captain America's underwear. I like, I like Mexico's. No, this is an old one. This is from like 2015. I like that one. Oh. Uh, um, look for you like it. Oh, Mexico's I like this one is fire. I'm not saying I like it better than this one, but I, Mexico's is no. The new kid is trash. This is the USA. No. One. So, Vic, who you got, buddy? Give us your analysis of the World Cup as an expert. Winning the whole entire thing. So you I ran a bracket. Analysis, however you want to win. Um, I've. D- so okay, so this is how I would say it. I think the USA is going to make it out of their group. I think of the CONCACAF teams, Canada is going to be the strongest because they've been the strongest for the last four years. Canada is a big sleeper. See, the thing with North American teams, the thing with the African teams is that they've been so far behind South America and Europe that those teams are always going to do better at World Cups. Those are the players that get picked to play in the biggest leagues. Um, You think La Liga, you think... Wait, wait, wait. Bundesliga. Wait, you said Canada. Frank, 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 Frank. Yeah, got. You said Canada. Canada. Canada, yeah, Canada. We're, talking about, yeah, we're, actually, we're talking about like World Cup football, not World Cup hockey, right? <laughs> Yo, don't sleep on the Canadians, son. The Canadians, they. I don't know if it's global warming and is that enough heist for them niggas to play hockey? But yo, they know how to kick a footy. They are actually really. Fifty bucks that'll make it out of the first. Round. Canada has crushed a lot of teams. Wait, the group bucks. stage or the first round? Yeah, the group stage. Out of the out of the out of their of the group stage, you don't think they're making it out of the group stage? No, you're crazy. I'll take that bet. I'll take that so- bet right now. So I'll share the groups. Uh, I'll share the groups right now. Canada's group, Canada's group consists of Morocco, right. Belgium, and okay. Croatia. Okay, be, Croatia's got Croatia's players Belgium are all older. Quality though, I got Belgium and Canada coming out of that group. Canada I got Belgium and Canada, Canada coming out of that right group. Now. Okay, blame Canada. Okay, blame Canada. Like you see. I I like so my anyway. run my rundown. Then you're gonna get the Netherlands and Senegal out of Group One. You're gonna get England and the United States out of Group Two. You're gonna get Argentina and Mexico out of Group Three, with possibly Poland because Lewandowski is always gonna be Lewandowski. That nigga's gonna pour in goals like ain't nothing funny. But when you look at traditionally the stronger teams, I'd have to no. You know what? Actually, I picked Poland in that group. I have Mexico going out because Mexico is a lot older and they're not as organized as they have been. Sorry, Gus. I know how you feel. I'm not trying to. Pee in your wetsuit, but I know how you do. Then you, you got know why you're wrong? coming no, out of that. Group. Why am I wrong? Because Mexico was on the up, bro. They just got a whole movie. This is like <laughs> Apocalypto all over again. They got Namor and the cow. Those motherfuckers are gonna have wings on their motherfucking ankles, and they're gonna be kicking the footy across the goddamn field. 
But that movie was badass, by the way. It's a ball. It's fucking I love that movie. It was pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm like the only dude of our group that has yet to watch it. Um, I haven't seen it yet either. I'm I'm waiting. I mean, for, in Germany, you know, I'm their group. Wow, that's shit, bro, dude. At least we're there. Gus, yes, man. Greece, you're there. Greece, yes, Greece has all the really important. really important countries, man. We don't have to play the U.S. and Canada. I want I want the smoke. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even good. Brazil and Serbia. Uh, Serbia is out. I got Brazil and Sweden and uh, uh, Switzerland, and I've got Brazil, yeah. Uruguay and Portugal. Uh, my sleeper team for the World Cup, and I know this is going to be super controversial. I got Uruguay Ooh, winning right. their third. I got Uruguay coming in real strong. Their defense is shit, but on the attack, Uruguay is really you know Luis Suarez is old, but they got a lot of young cats that are killing it. Right is that how it's? So that's my sleeper team. I think France is going to win it all. Uruguay, yeah. Uruguay, Uruguay. Same shit. You're going. Um, Argentina, until Messi leaves, until Messi leaves, Argentina will never win a World Cup. Uh, Nick likes Germany. I love Germany, but I just don't think Germany is as strong as they could be. Um, I think France is a better team. So I, if I have to pick a European team, I'd pick France. Uh, no, Germany's going to win 100%. South American team, I think Uruguay is a sleeper. No, Germany's going to win because they can have a military again. Yes, a hundred million dollars in the military. <laughs> they can have a military again. They're going to win the World Cup, and they're going to get all high and mighty, and they're going to okay, be like, yeah, so you know, what? I know this we, is... we need a thousand year to rank. <laughs> so I know this is kind of fucked up, right? But like every time something happens, it's always fucking Germany, Poland, and Russia. Like fucking poor po- Poland, bro. Three back to back starting world wars. Right, always them, and they're always the receiving end. Always. They just nah, guys, like, I'm not picking they, Greece. They I'm picking Germany or, Russia their chance. Or, or Brazil. Huh? Wait, what would you say? No, I thought Russia had a chance for this World Cup, but they bounced them, right? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't remember. I think they, they might have because of the war, yeah. I think they got bounced because they were told that they were going to have to play as the Russian Federation, and then because of the war, they got ousted. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want Brazil. Don't get me either. wrong. I love the USA team. I want USA to win it when it comes to America. Like, I think that that will change the game of soccer in America. So, World Cup 2026, USA, Mexico, and Canada are hosting. So, I don't really see the USA being ready to really compete until those games, but I think by then they will make it past the U- the group the stage. The U.S. could have competed in their first round. Could, could have competed this World Cup, but the USA has the same issue that the English team has. They have no coach. Two trash coaches. Yeah. Had they stuck with Klinsman? Had they stuck with Klinsman? I think I like Burhalter. Don't get me wrong. I think that the way that he's growing the youth into the players that they are today is great. But Klinsman was the dude. I'm sorry, but when you have people that play all over Europe. And every time I watch the U.S., it's an absolute fucking shit show. Like it's like elementary shit. I remember talking to your to your buddy. What's his name? The um, oh my god, my brain. The Colombian cat, Vic. Oh, um, you're talking about uh, talking about Damien. Damien. So me, Damien too. He was like, dude, it's like watching somebody who does not know how to coach. It's it's it's, it's absurd. And the fact. That Harry Maguire, salut, Harry Maguire is going to the World Cup is a disgrace. <laughs> Did you the greatest meme that's come out this month? Have you seen what what Ronaldo didn't say it, but they said he said that in Man United the fridge used to be under the bleachers. Now he's in the backfield where the captains are banned. <laughs> <laughs> More importantly, because I know we have a big topic that I'm super excited to hear you guys talk about. World Cup is going to be great. If you've never experienced football or soccer, depending on where you are in the world, this is the time. Is this is this is it's going to be a month, a month of greatness. Now there are some downsides to this World Cup. Like some of the games are going to kick off at five o'clock in the morning because they're playing in Qatar. Um, they're playing it in the winter, which has never happened in the World Cup because they're playing it in Qatar. Um, and it's still going to be 180 Security forces are shutting down reporters 
Yeah, it's going to be like 120 degrees. Their fucking mascot is a ghost who bounces around. But this is Fire Festival, Frank. You know what the Fire Festival is, right? Mm-hmm. This is Fire Festival 2.0, my guy. So you're going to pay 12 euros for a beer. Originally Budweiser, who's the only beer you can get at the World Cup because they're the sponsor of FIFA. So you cannot drink anything but Budweiser. Fine. You know what? American beer. That's what we grew up on. I, I I hate Budweiser too, but they had spots in the stadium. They're now moving them outside of the stadium to designated areas. You can only get a maximum of four beers. If you're caught publicly intoxicated, they're taking you to a holding area until you can sober up. Um, $12 beers. The, the water is like $3, which is, you know, acceptable. But they have these rooms. I just found them. They're called fan rooms. So if you can't get a hotel or you decided, hey, I want to be a part of the full FIFA experience. I want to stay at the stadium. I want to be there. I want to be a part of the experience. So when I leave, I can just go to bed. People are paying $400 for rooms that look like this. This is the greatest shit ever. Is the mascot a ghost? Because that's what happens after their bomb bomb vest, their suicide vest goes off. <laughs> that room that room will cost you four hundred dollars a person. Bro, that's the, yeah, that's the same exact rooms they had at Firefest. <laughs> that is the same you know what room. though? I don't usually agree with Goose. I, and and I, I, I hate that I do now because I hate him. But <laughs> I'm kidding. I love the guy. But he's right. He's actually like a hundred percent right. One of the fun things is about the about football in general is, is the atmosphere, right? It's the it's the party fest, it's the crazy like last minute nonsense, nonstop singing. And I really feel that it's going to there's gonna be a lack of, you know, drunk fans, but like those good drunk fans, not the ones that start fights, the ones that got like the Vuvuzelas and all those crazy shits, you know what I mean? So Yeah, but, but. I mean Audrey Audrey <laughs> brought up a good question though. Can you watch the game in holding? Probably not because they're a Muslim country and they have stupid rules. Yeah, you're not wrong. Like the <laughs> the, the the whole the, the fan zone the worst part is, is if you could yeah, not be there, right? They have shipping containers with cots. Yeah, I, I made a prediction. I was waiting until see. I didn't want to like put it out there, but I have a prediction, and it's dated. I literally dated it so I could present. Nick is going to go to the World Cup while he's in <laughs> Dubai. I have it written so, down, but I wasn't going to share it. But I knew I, I knew you were. <laughs> I might. I might. I don't know, man. They have some weird. Bro, COVID don't do that to yourself. Know. They're gonna hate you. Beard, I look like a Muslim. I'm safe. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Audrey. Mm-hmm. I I got you. I got your back. Um, are you? Yeah. Are you gonna but, wear the sheet, Nick? Are you gonna put on the sheet? Yes, yes. Actually, I will send you no. pictures. I will. I am going out for um. We did uh. We booked like the safari where we go out in the desert. So I'm gonna be full like sheeted out. That's not a wait. safari, bitch. A safari has animals and shit. The only thing you're gonna see out there is lizards and snakes. <laughs> that is. Bitch, I got that a is, camel. I guess he a camel. Uh, yeah, no, that's no, gonna I got a camel. Him. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. So you're going to see three types of animals. Can you please? Maybe a bird. <laughs> in the Sahara, in the fucking desert? That's what I'm saying. In I'm saying desert? maybe. One of your guides might have a hawk like my man from The Mummy. I don't know. Ooh, maybe. That will be some bad so look, shit. So look, look. Okay, I'm just going to say this. I'm just going to say what, this, right? What I'm, wait, 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 real quick. Frank, uh, no, hold on. I have, I have a thought for you. Nick hit you with a thought and asked you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Uh-huh. Imagine Nick in his sheet sitting uh-huh. on the back of a horse looking like a grown man riding, sitting on the back of a camel looking like a grown man riding a mini horse. <laughs> That's what I see. <laughs> Yeah, so what I laughed about, what I thought was fucking hilarious, because this is what popped in my head. You, you, you're out on the safari, safari, um, you know, the tour where you're going to go look at sand for yeah, some yeah. reason. Um, but everybody's out there, right? Your tour guide, all that shit. And they have like the traditional like garb on. And then uh-huh. this motherfucker, you see this motherfucker coming up to, over the sand dune on his camel. And he has like a, a fucking like Powerpuff Girl sheet on his head. <laughs> that's all they have. <laughs> He's got a Harry Potter Hufflepuff sheet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh 
Oh no! Oh no! I'm gonna step off. I... Wait, his water backpack? The what are you talking about? It's actually the camel pack, and he can't stop yeah, making jokes about riding a camel with a camel pack. Like just the worst fucking dad jokes <laughs> ever. <laughs> Ooh, you know what? Oops, I didn't even buy any sandals. I might have to step up. I might go get those Black Panther from the first movie when Suri's like, what are those? And he's like, oh, give me my I, OG sandals. I'm getting those. Like, I like tradition. With, uh, uh, I'm, you know, with the with the big toe wrap? Hard. The Air Moseses? <laughs> I thought it was the Jihad 12s. <laughs> uh, force. <laughs> force. <laughs> <laughs> the GI 12 guitar edition. So look, <laughs> fellas, I love y'all. I'm gonna let y'all get to the business. Uh, what I do want to do is I want to make a plea to the to the people that are watching. If you've never gotten into football, it took me 34 years of my life to really understand how great the game of football is. Um, if you you've ever watched time. soccer, if you've never wanted to get into you know actual league play, the World Cup is a great time to enjoy. This isn't gonna be the greatest oh games. Um, next year is going to be huge. Next four years will be huge when they expand the field to the Wednesday. Teams. Please, uh, it's going to be Ooh. here in the states. And it's going to be, you know, that's going to be a thing. Um, but I would challenge you: watch a World Cup game, man. It's it's a different kind of vibe. You know, this is the world's game, and if we could all unite under one thing, I think everybody should unite under football. So I'm going to leave you with that. Rotation TV. Thank you guys for hanging out. The uneducated heathens. We got two amazing hosts here who hold it down weekly. So make sure you tune in next week. But fellas, I'm gonna let you jump into the meat and potatoes of your show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm gonna go back to work before you guys beat me. Okay. Bye. All right, Frankie. You he should have showed Nip before he left, huh? I know, right? Like he never shows <laughs> Nip. Never. So just um a little preface before Frank brings us home. It's just in subjects like this, oh, there you Bobby. go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I feel like we should show so, our dicks now. Um, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, when, whenever me and Frank have these conversations, and we Don't have them quite often, right? Like, we enjoy going down this path. We always like to do it kind of inebriated, right? Is that a good word, Frankie? Yeah. That is the word. That's the definition. Yeah, of the like word. we're very because because it makes the conversation fun. Usually when we do like those serious subjects, we're like let's be sober, serious, but sober. Yeah, but today's yeah. gonna be a lot of fun, and I hope you guys really enjoy this. Uh, we're about to get into some really cool shit. If we slur a little bit, it's because we're having a good time. We're enjoying it. So Frankie, the legend, the myth, the 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 the, the mixture of a Norwegian Thor and Hercules. Go ahead, Hercules. <laughs> oh, that's about to be my new name. Uh, actually, I might change my Instagram name to to Thorkelis. That's, that's not pretty, a bad name, fam. That's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty solid. Um, so, as you can see from the title, our show tonight is one of Greek and the Egyptian god merge. We get alchemy. What we're going to be talking about is. Kind of a wide base subject, but a very pinpointed section of it, if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit of a base structure for this conversation, just to kind of help folks out understand like where it comes from, right? And where that comes from is actually something that has been talked about quite a bit um, with people like Graham Hancock and Russell Carlson. Um, people on Rogan's show, Graham Hancock has a show on Netflix now called uh, Ancient Apocalypse. I've been getting into very, very sure. interesting stuff. It is very good. Um, but basically, the basis of that is that uh, 12,000 years ago, give or take, is when the Younger Dryas impact happened. That's what we're kind of learning to be true was when it wiped out a lot of the animals from the Ice Age. It is when... You know, we had mass casualty events here on the planet. What the basis um, for especially Graham Hancock specifically is talking about is that with that younger driest impact 12,000, give or take a couple hundred years ago, it wiped out a civilization, an ancient civilization that was around, that was striving, that was thriving, right? We're talking about the 
uh, source for a lot of our old world monoliths and old world structures that we know of today, right? Um, modern archaeology says that civilization popped out about 6,000 years ago. Uh, we're talking about something that happened double time that, you know, a civilization that had been around for a lot longer. Um, some of the artifacts from that civilization or that happened because of that are the pyramids, the Sphinx, Gobekli uh, uh, I can't even say the word, Gobekli Tepe, there it is, and um, other places like that. The Parthenon, Sunni. The Parthenon, well, the, the, the layout, the instructions, the blueprints for the Parthenon, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> So where a lot of that comes from, and even the structures that came on after that, like the, the Aztec structures, the Mayan structures, a lot of those places, when you go back and you read through their histories, the histories that they wrote down, they say, you know, they inherited it. It was already there. They, they just kind of made it their own shit. And with the Egyptian stuff, a lot of the time you'll see these... Um, statues of people right where those statues were recarved or completely disfigured to hide the faces of who the the original were actually actually were um one of those being the sphinx they completely removed the nodes of the sphinx right the sphinx is there they think between 12 and eighteen thousand years old just off of the erosion the water erosion right um so there is a story of, yeah, and the way it lines up um, astro uh, astrologically as well. Sorry, I'm having a trouble with big words. Bear with me. I'm getting through. All right. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but where a lot of this comes from is a source called Toth or Toth the Atlantean. Okay. Toth the Atlantean was a record keeper slash king of Atlantis. And once the destruction of Atlantis happened, um, which the timeline is pretty close, the way that uh, if you read the original transcript of Plato, um, the, the timeline is pretty close for what Plato said Atlantis was to where these uh, the younger Dry's impact happened, actually. Um, very precise, actually. 9600 BC. It was, it's actually very like on point. Yeah, it's 11,000 years compared to like 11,000. Because yeah. if you actually look at the Younger Dryas, it's 11,600, I think is the exact number. To but at the it. time Plato said it, he said it was 9,000 years ago, right? Plus, plus he said right. around 600 BC. So it's the exact timeline. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's right there. Um, which is very interesting in itself, right? Isn't it? Recently, I, I agree. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I don't mean to like just ramble on, but I'm just trying to get as much no, as the before for you. In. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Toth the Atlantean, after the destruction of Atlantis, he dipped the fuck out and went to a land called Kem. Kem or Kemet is the original name of Egypt. And once he got there, you see civilizations just pop up. Like it just started, right? pyramids, all this other shit just popping up out of nowhere, boom, 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 boom. And I know that modern science says that, uh, or modern archaeology, I should say, says that the pyramids were tombs. I can almost guarantee you they weren't. They've never found anything tomb-like in them. They've never found a body in any of the pyramids at all, period. And there's a lot of pyramids. It's not just the three that we know about in Giza. There's, there's tons of them, right? And not only those pyramids, but pyramids across the world have never found a body in them. Right? So, Nico, have you they ever... Had a king, the, the Valley of the Kings, right? Like, that's where they yeah. buried them. Yeah. So, for, well, partially. That's where the new kings were buried. <clears throat> yeah, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of tombs there. So, the timelines, I think, are messed up. But I'll tell you one thing that I found very interesting to your point is that there is a huge myth and it's 100% a myth. It's proven. And I'll give you guys some facts. But it's a myth that the pyramids were tombs and they were built by slaves. You were not allowed to be a slave when you built the pyramid. And we know that because they have found artifacts and places where they, the, the workers lived and they had their own brewery. They had their own stuff. 
they were buried tradition because it was an honor. It was an honor that um that that to work on the pyramid. So the ideology behind it that everybody was a slave was just another thing to cover a lot of the pyramids. And also, to your point, there is a lot of hidden chambers inside those pyramids that we haven't seen. Like, right, we know they're there, but we we don't. We we're not gonna break in. We're not gonna destroy a structure to get in. But <clears throat> I don't know. It's 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 kind of it's kind of crazy um, how th these civilizations popped up right away, and it makes sense that he went to Egypt because Egypt predates ancient Greece. Mm -hmm. um, and um, if you think about it, you know Plato talks about like. Uh, Socrates uh, about learning the story from somebody who had been to Egypt too. Solon, Solon, yeah, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so he learned it, he learned it from that. But um, it's 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 a it's a whole different ball game, you know. Now it makes sense, right? Like the timeline. So makes sense Solon, to... so Plato, Plato was a child when he heard the story of Atlantis the first time, right? And he heard yeah. it at basically it was a dinner party. Of a bunch of these, you know, well-to-do people yeah, yeah. In, in Athens at the time, Athens. and one of those people was Solon. Solon, and Solon had traveled to Egypt like one of the many times that he, uh, one of the many times that he went to Egypt, and he was talking to an Egyptian priest of Toth. Toth, and that Egyptian priest is the one who relayed the story of Atlantis to Solon. Can we address that question on the chat real quick, Frank? Any ideas what slaves did, if not? So huh? what I was trying to say, uh, Stars, is that they weren't slaves. Um, they, I don't know if... I don't know no, what she's name. asking is what, what did the slaves do if they didn't do the uh, physical labor, i.e. The, they were servants. They were servants, yeah. Yeah, so here's... The, because the honor... We're going to get to that. We're gonna to get to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I, jumping. I you. You're jumping. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't fuck up my flow, dude. I'm concentrating <laughs> over here. Need another drink. <laughs> I love it. You know what? That, I give her props though, because like her questions are on point, and she's trying to she's trying to get some answers. So respect. Yeah. So to answer the first question about the slaves, slaves were mainly um, they were servants. there at servants, right? They were there getting water, getting food, things like that. Also. From what I understand from my reading, they were the ones who were mixing the mortar Correct. for a lot of the building. Okay. So even though you have these huge blocks that go in on the in that the blocks on the outside don't have mortar. They are perfectly fit in there, right? The blocks on the inside, the blocks are uh in the paintings, all that stuff, the blocks on the inside had mortar, which had to be mixed, right? The the paintings had paint, which had to be made and mixed and everything. There were still jobs for slaves to do. The 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 story of having hundreds of thousands, yeah, making the pancake, <laughs> the baby batter. Um, having, I, I gotta tell you though, so there's, so this is something that I, I have looked into quite a lot because there was there's. There's a bigger myth here um, about slavery in Egypt, and I don't want to go down this path because it gets it, it takes us away from the main. I was subject. just about, I was just about to talk about that though. I was about to hit oh, on it. Like, you the, want the to number, go ahead? I didn't. Yeah, the number of slaves in Egypt is drastically overnumbered. Like it's drastically yeah. overrated, and um, the class lawsuit jobs. Yeah, basically, uh, basically, Audrey. Yeah. So, but yeah, the no, the numbers of slaves in Egypt at the time were vastly overshot. Like they're saying that there was three, four, five hundred thousand. No, it no. wasn't even fucking close to that. You're talking you know, about the, sub fifty k. That a really good symbiotic relationship with the ancestors of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. So the, the Jewish people at the time were phenomenal farmers, phenomenal farmers. So the pharaohs yeah. gave them a lot of land for them to to farm. Right. So yeah, they, they were, were kind of like, like royalty, so they had a lot of slaves too. To to, to put it in perspective, slaves. in a Greek manner, they were the um, I was about to say hoplites. That's not right. The Hittite, no, is it Hittites? Who were the people that grew the food for the Spartans? I can't remember the name right now. Probably everybody that was around the Messenians. Everybody. No, there was a specific name for them. Grew food for. Stand by. The Helots. The Helots, yes. Yes, they were like the helots, where they were in service to the Spartans, but they weren't necessarily slaves. Correct. Right, so that's kind of a way to think about it. All right, 
backtrack a little bit here. So sure. we have talked to the Atlantean, right? King of Atlantis, well, one of the kings of Atlantis, and the record keeper for Atlantis after the destruction of Atlantis went to Egypt. Now, what we have to understand about Egypt at this time, it was not what we know of Egypt today. And what I mean by that, it wasn't desert. It was a rainforest. All of the northern Africa, the Sahara, was not the Sahara Desert. It was We would call it the Sahara Rainforest. It's literally mm-hmm. the largest rainforest on the planet. It, it rotates in about nine to 10,000 year cycles. We're actually getting close to that point again where, where it should start reverting back into a rainforest close relatively, like a couple thousand years or so. Um, but at the time, Egypt was lush. It akin to the amazon right um so it's really the perfect area to restart or jumpstart again civilization that's why i think he went there and they already had budding groups here and there throughout that land of northern africa egypt specifically right Mm -hmm. so tote the atlantean has with him these emerald tablets and these emerald Three tablets emerald have, tablets and they hold the histories the magical shit right and then basically from what i understand um <clears throat> not archaeological but uh building building sciences i can't think of the word right now shit but building masonry. science Mason, masonry things like that yeah um but that's what he had on these emerald tablets. One of those being a tablet that combined with the emerald tablet of Hermes Trismegistus. I think I said that right. Or was close. Trismegistus. Yeah. 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 Three. Uh, He's all three. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, with those combined is basically where we get the base plan for alchemy, right? All right. Any questions so far, Nico? No, but. I have um, I have thoughts. Yeah, go ahead, hit me. What you got so far? This is kind of like part one of this three part so, section that we're doing. So here, here's here's my monkey wrench, right? Uh uh-huh. I I don't really necessarily I don't know how I feel about Atlantis being a real place. We we discussed this, you and I have we had this fight, right? But here's yeah. my here's my thing. There were there were other cultures. Ish. that predate no there was other very important cultures that predate the egyptians and the sun rage which will be the mesopotamians the the um, sumerians well, the sumerians right mm-hmm. so I, the thing is a lot of like i don't know were those were those also descendants of yeah that? Is so okay. so the story that's put out there is that there was yep. multiple kings like Atlantis had like well there was so Toth had multiple brothers and sisters these other brothers and Correct. sisters is what makes up the part the uh, the pantheon right the pantheon of, yeah of e- uh, Egyptian Greek Roman it's all the same shit right so no 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 hold up hold up, hold up. it's if all you're gonna say something it's, it's don't use the word Roman for the love of God. You well, no, no, what I'm saying, else, no, no. Romans, Romans have invented, not, like, I'm getting hot right now. No Romans. Everybody No, else. but what I mean is that they, the, the Egyptians and the Greeks borrowed from each other. All day, yeah. And the Romans borrowed from the Greeks. From that's everybody. what, that's what I mean. It's all the same okay. shit as far as that yeah, is yeah. concerned. Jupiter okay. is Zeus. Zeus is Amun-Ra, right? No, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's what I mean. Don't get your panties in a bunch. Just take them off and throw them at me. Fuck. <laughs> um, Goose, we will get to the fucking aliens. I don't think there's really aliens in this, to be honest with you. It's more Atlanteans. But if you want to consider them aliens, it's fine. You just like penis and aliens, bro. But I love you. He's big. Oh my god! Imagine alien penises. He'll lose his marbles. Uh, I know what we're getting, Goose, for his birthday. Uh, <laughs> an alien penis. Let's go. An alien penis. Um, <laughs> but no. So. Toth had multiple siblings, right? And Toth, Toth, however you want to, I'm going to say Toth from now on. Just, I think that's okay. a better pronunciation. Toth, yeah. Toth. But so Toth basically got into a beef with his siblings and then he dipped the fuck out of Egypt, right? But his siblings, some of his siblings went to Egypt. They went to Kim with him. Other ones were in Sumeria already from, and this is all stuff that's been written down. Um, and yeah. that's where a lot of those civilizations came along. Like, for instance, Babylon. Babylon, if you look 
at renderings of how Babylon was, it looks like something that was completely made up. Yeah. Right? Atlanteans are illegal aliens in this story. <laughs> sure. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so aliens. he likes illegal alien penises. Yeah, so brown, brown penis, got it. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're straight. No, that's fine. We just got a message on the back end not to be alarmed. I'm already alarmed. I feel we both got alarmed. We we're like, what we, message? We did. We're, we're, we're like, drunk, no. man. Don't do this to us. Yeah, don't, don't. <laughs> mm -mm. No, sir. Drink break. All right, so. Nico, I sent you some stuff to read. Yeah. I gave you homework. How much of that homework did you get done? All of it. All right. So what do you think about... So part of the story is that at one point in time, uh, Toth is known as Hermes uh, okay. Trismegustus, right? And they are the same person, right? right. So what do you feel about that or how do you look at that it's 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 dope and and i know I'm, I'm not gonna go super like you know deep in it i'm just gonna use my plain simple words because it, it's dope it's some dope shit because we know from somebody that has respect all over the world as one of the fathers of philosophy right like it's not somebody who just would just sit there and make up a myth talked mm -hmm. about a civilization that predated them and all the all the techno technological advance, advancements that they had, and the thing that I've always found quite interesting is that as as far as all these places are, they have a lot in common. Whether it be the Aztecs, the Incas, the Mayans, the Greeks, the the Egyptians, the even Sub-Saharan Egyptians, like they were a little different. Uh, you were talking about Sumerians, which is completely the other way, or Babylonians, right. or Persians. They they share a lot, right? And and they all talk up, like you said on your on your intro. You were basically talking about like they all share that there was something there before, and everybody talks about it differently. The one myth about Atlantis is that they were all gods, right? But mm -hmm. they were considered gods because they had technology that would make them that way. So right. everybody, as soon they praised them. But I don't. I've read. I've read. Um, I, 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 I didn't read the whole book. I want to read the entire book. But I read a little bit of of the tablets. You know what, what the writings are from from Hermes, um, uh, to Magustus, where right? thrice, three times. You're, but they're cool, Greek, right? Bro, you should know this. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, but but it's cool. The thing here with me is that Magistus, fellas, Trace Magistus. Trimagistas, if you want to go Greek. That's there you go. Trimagistas. The, the thing is that I don't know whether or not Atlantis was a real place. I think. Why was, are you not? Why are you so um, against that? I'm not, hold up. I'm not against it. I'm I'm a fan. I mean, me and you were talking about possible places where it could be, right? Like, I'm not a, against it. I just think that. In the minds of great people at that time, whether it will be Pharaoh, uh, I mean, there will be Egyptian, you know, priests and um, and Greek philosophers and stuff like that. They were looking at where they were hoping the civilization would go. The only thing to play devil advocate to my own point, because this is important too, um, it's it's been said that hieroglyphs were invented by uh, what's his name. Before Toth. he became Hermes, yeah, Toth. He's yeah. the lead, he's the he's the creator of hieroglyphics, and hieroglyphics are actually very unique, right? Like there's there's hieroglyphics that we still they look like they're items of today. So, I mean, you don't know, but if Atlantis, if Atlantis was a real place, and all this is remnants, that makes sense. But you know, I think one thing that that drives me to the fact that it could be more real is the fact that there's been a lot of lies that have been debunked mm -hmm. that were unnecessary right like for right. example the whole thing with the and i and, you know and the head remember that egyptian dude that was in every freaking documentary horse like with the 
with that white hair. Oh no, Zarahi or whatever his name is. Yeah, he did yeah. a phenomenal, and he disappeared by the way after he did that. He did a phenomenal documentary about the lies about about the Egyptian slaves. Yeah, because they didn't. You want remember him to that do a documentary? Correct, and and the thing is, some of the stuff like that 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 on the tablets, you know, it's kind of. The reason why I tend to 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 gravitate towards it, whether or not I believe it or not, but I gravitate to it is because it's very. Um, I know you. I know you're not gonna like the analogy, but it's very Pandora-ish. You know what I mean? Like everything around you has its purpose, right? Like like there's the sun. The, yeah, this guy, bro. I yeah. love this dude. So, like for example, he kept even, a lot of information though. Yeah, yeah, but he's a G though. He knows everything. I wish I could. I, I wish I could spend some. I don't know if he's alive or not, but I wish I could spend. Yeah, he's alive. 50, he's 20, not. Yeah, Z uh, Zahi, Zahi Hawass. Hawass. Yep. You know, yeah, no, so, he's alive. Uh, he's just no longer the curator or the lead uh, no. person and archaeologist. They removed him after he did that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I just I'm gravitated to the fact that you know when he talks. You know, the thrice means three. He's three. He's uh, the sun, uh, the moon, and everything in between, right? And then he talks about about how the atoms were split and things that, that were so ahead of that time, right? Right, like crazy things ahead of the time. But you know, it's 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 super intriguing. the The problem I have is like not a lot of people really get into it and they don't talk about it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it kind of dies out. So I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. I can't talk definitive. I have my thoughts, but I, I just don't know. So I think a lot of that, right, has to deal with it's just, okay, for a second, let's just say, let's just put caution to the side. And let's say all this shit was 100% fucking true, right? Like yeah. no doubt about it, right? How would people fucking react to that? They would lose their minds. Would we? Would they though? Yeah. We don't know what exactly it's on those tablets. Remember, they were just, they were never found, right? Like they were just written in in, in Arabic uh -huh. books. Vatican cough. Vatican cough. Cough. <laughs> the Vatican has a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, yeah, we, they really you know, do. They do. They have some really interesting stuff. Um, but you know, they haven't been theoretically found. Like, you know, Jesus' own handwritings haven't been found, but the Vatican has all of it, whoever has it. But the translations that came from those Arabic books, which have been phenomenal, you know, it's not it's not like I'm the greatest, you know, like it's not a it's not a very like I'm going to bring everything to you. It's, it's kind of humble, in my opinion, just reading a little bit. Like I would tell everybody, just go read the Wikipedia part of this, right? It's actually right. like super informative. It's pretty cool. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like the whole Atlantis thing, like the myth behind it, it's kind of like crazy. And then, you know, because it's been repeated, right? Was right. Atlantis Aslatan? I don't know if I'm saying that. Aslatan? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Is that the same city? Is that the same place? Yeah, it could be. I mean, it really could be. Or what I think is that maybe one of the Atlanteans left and then went and founded uh, Asla. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't so know. The time maybe. Frame, but the time frame is yeah maybe I don't know, but but it's not that old, right? And neither is Egypt. Well, do we so, know that? We don't. <laughs> it's really easy to play devil's advocate with shit where we don't have all the information. And even if you put together like piece together, like bro, there's Egyptian tablets, like Egyptians writings, right? That talk about. Oh yeah, this pharaoh reigned for forty thousand years. Yeah, I know, I know. Like, so it's like either our math and our understanding of the shit is way the fuck off, or, yeah. or there's something going on there, like for real, right? But my biggest thing, and, and I'm gonna kind of circle back here to answer Audrey's question, where Audrey was like, "Well, if they weren't tombs, what were they used for?" Right? So, do we? Nico, you know how the pyramids looked when they were finished, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. So they were coated with limestone on the outside. Yeah. And they had gold on the, the top. top. Yeah. Right. So limestone 
has a lot of you you sell crystals, motherfucker. You should know this. Quartz. Oh yeah, of course. Sorry, yeah, absolutely. Quartz quartz was huge huge in the Egyptian culture, period. Right. So limestone is has a very, very high density of quartz, right? Yep. What are two of some of the greatest semiconductors on our planet? Quartz. And gold. So what a lot of theories look at and what I believe one of the tablets looked at as well was the fact that um, the pyramids were actually uh, basically Wi-Fi electricity. So, okay, do you know who Dr. Stephen Greer is? Yeah, 100%. Okay, I love Dr. Greer, right? The little alien guy. Yeah. Yes. But so I started following him kind of religiously. He says outrageous shit, but some of the stuff he says like hit home. So he has said that we've been we've been able to have this technology since ancient times. It was given to us, according to him, from aliens, right? Mm -hmm. Which could be an Atlantean, right? But um, but what they're saying is that exactly your point like it was just unlimited electricity right the way they're positioned the way their cosmic you know cosmic energy i don't know exactly but it was unlimited unlimited power right yeah i think that's a hundred percent accurate like there's there's just a lot of evidence for it right like the there's batteries the baghdadi batteries have you seen those yes have you seen the, they, they had a, but that's the thing. They had shit that didn't even need electricity. Have you familiar yourself with the, with the, I'm just paraphrasing, the laptop they have found in Greece, like an ancient yeah, machine that yeah, actually, the, uh, it's mechanical, ant- it's phenomenal. Ant- 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 the the antithetical, ant- I don't know how to say it in English, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's a Greek word, so you wouldn't have to say it in English, sir. No, it's translated. It was fine. It was fine. Antikythera, which is uh, yeah, Antikythera machine. That's what they call it. The meta- yeah, but it's an island. Yeah, so they call it the Antikythera machine, which is which is an island in Greece. Yeah. Yeah, but that's but what it's they fire. Call it. yeah. yeah, yeah, it's insane. But yeah, so the the alignments of the stars have a lot to do with that too, though, Goose, because it's like you have to remember that's how they navigated back then, right? So think of it like a lighthouse. Right. You know what I mean? That's the way we navigate across shore. Is through a lighthouse. So those stars themselves, that could have been an ode to where they thought their gods were. That could have been an ode to where they came from. Like there's just a there's that's super open to translation, I guess you could say. What are you looking up? Yeah. Huh? What are you looking up? No, I was trying to see if I pronounced it right. Like I was like, I'm a little out of it, so I was like, let me just make sure I didn't fuck that up. I'm Greek. That's a bad look. But I did say it correctly. <laughs> it's a horrible so here's look, another sir. thing. So here's another thing. You, you know, I say this quite a lot in our conversations, and I know it's been taken as a joke, but I don't believe Greeks are of this planet. I've said this before, like the ancient Greeks. I'm not Greek, right? The Greeks of today have nothing to do with ancient Greeks. Because although we know a lot of these other places where they come from, the the actual official, you know, ideologies that Greeks came from the north, but where from? There's no culture out there. You know what I mean? All of a sudden appeared and they were like, well, we're just going to invent everything. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, salute. Um, cheers, buddy. Cheers, cheers, buddy. Cheers. Life is good. So here's the thing. I don't know what to say right now. I'm just, I'm a little lost. But uh, no, you don't think Greeks are this, uh, ancient Greeks are from this planet. Correct. Which is, which is why I think the story that was passed down mm. is from, it's from not Atlantis. I don't think Atlantis was from here. So wait, couldn't ancient Greeks just be descendants of Atlantis, like almost direct descendants? Well, that's the myth, right? We are direct, like the like. For example, I'm, I'm, and this you know this to be true. Like most of the at, at, uh, Atlantean deities and names were very Hellenic, centric, uh, Hellenic yeah. based, where where Egyptians were not. Right. 
So here's my question. Here's my thing, right? So going back to kind of Toth the Atlantean, and we have him as Toth the Atlantean who went to Egypt and became, you know, Toth the Egyptian, right? And that was one part of it. And then the next time this character, this person pops up, he's he's Greek. He has a Greek yeah. name. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's influencing Greek culture. And then you see Greek culture just explode at that point. Right. Um, they, you know, especially in Athens, like I know, I know our families aren't from Athens, but that's where the, that's where society, that's where philosophy really sprung up from. Okay. Right. Right. So is that influence from this Toth the Atlantean or Hermes Tresmagustus? Well, well, here's the weird thing, though. Like, Egyptian culture and Greek culture, although they were very respectful of each other, they're, they're very, very different. There is mm -hmm. literally nothing in common, right? The right. philosophy of the Greeks were knowledge is for everybody, where most of the Egyptian was like the high priestess and the pharaohs. The, the peasants and the everyday people didn't really know why they were doing the things. It was an honor to work on the pyramids, but they didn't, they didn't share knowledge that the priest had. Right. So if one person went to both, so, so here's this, actually, that's actually kind of cool. So you bring me to something else and me and you have talked about this, but what if, what if Atlantis as a, as a over was so powerful oh, that they decided, did I freeze? No, I think you froze. Am I back? Can you hear me? You're back, uh, Frankie. Frank. Okay, Frankie looks like he's coming back. Okay, Frankie's back. Yeah, I don't know what what the hell just happened there, but the, hey, um, the Pleiadians. They don't like the secrets coming out. Yeah, I'm saying though, right? So what I was trying to say is, what if what destroyed Atlantis was the concentration of too much power? Like, let's dumb it down. Remember there was a cartoon. I know I'm just a little drunk out of it, so I should know this. It was a Captain Earth where they all had rings, and when they all put the rings together, like this superhero came out. What was the name of that? Do you remember? Say that again. I'm sorry. Oh, Captain Planet. Uh, Captain, so, all right, yeah, but check this out. What The one thing about Captain Planet, from my understanding, was, you know, not one person had all five rings. Nobody was Thanos, you know what I mean? They all had to right, come right. together. So in Atlantis, had concentrated of all, the, all those natural gifted powers, I guess. So when Atlantis fell apart, maybe they went to Egypt, you know, they mm. taught him astrology and astronomy and stuff like that, or the afterlife. And in Greece, it was philosophy, democracy, and... You know, you know, stuff like that. Like, there's and there, Babylon you know, was look, was law, yeah. And then you had like Ast Aztecs who were very huge in, in you <laughs> know, <laughs> pull up a picture of Captain Planet. <laughs> so you know, you you know, it's it's all over the place. You don't know. Like, you can't sit there and talk from a definitive like aspect, right? Like, this is exactly what happened. Right. But I still I still have my doubts about like the, the whole ideology because timelines are a little messed up too right like you know egypt wasn't around from that long it, it, it started unless unless i was right mm -hmm. right and he's an alien and he it's was sitting there aliens. for forty thousand fucking years right and you know what i mean like he's been there for a while but yeah there's a, there's a lot we don't know like to your point earlier you said something about like they went and destroyed a bunch of like statues and stuff like that right yeah because Look at the Sphinx. They were completely dismorphed. Right. The easiest solution is was racism because they were black or whatever that was. Because that's actually a really big theory too. But um, that's the theory know. though. That's that's the theory. When the French Foreign Legion went in during World War One, I, I believe that's why they destroyed it. That's that's what is taught. They say Alexander Alexander did it first when he took over Egypt. Uh, you can't. Prove uh, that. I, I do. I mean, you're talking about the same guy who married Roxanne, Roxana, Roxanne, Roxanne, who was who was Indian. Like, yo, hold up, hold up. Can we can we just take a pause of that sophisticated stuff? If I'm conquering the entire fucking world, 
Yeah. You know, I'm marrying an Indian, a Persian. Like, I'm having, <laughs> I'm having a shorty on every time. Well, well he was also all gay. the known world. You know what I mean? He's like, gay. Yeah. He, he, no, no, no. He wasn't gay. He was Greek. You know what I mean? Like, how me and you are. <laughs> you have a wife, you know, but sometimes we get to get, no, hold up. We're going to start rumors right now. Don't backtrack now. It's true. <laughs> oh, Greeks were, you know, it's actually kind of a stupid di- diversion. Do you know why Greeks started, like, smashing each other? yeah because they it was it was a sexist a sexism thing correct when i read i read a little bit about it and i was kind of shocked they were like women are so dumb they cannot do anything but give birth to babies so like when i have fun i gotta go to my to my friend you know pericles to get a blowy or something (laughs) right to get a proper just yeah like you know the quality yeah. Quality, you know, Socrates, quality. But uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, but you know. Yeah, we're we're going off the on the edges here, but um. So let's yeah, man. Let me ask you a question. So sure. here's the thing. You know, we can't. We're going down a rabbit hole. We will never. Guys should be meat experts. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> professional meat experts. Yeah, damn, Audrey, come on. Yeah, Rough. Audrey. <laughs> Damn, I came out. I, I, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody. No. <laughs> Truth. Glitch. Um, so here's the thing, right? I've shared this with you before about, um, and I've shared it before in the stream. One of my favorite movies is The Name of the Rose, right? Right. And and the the whole per the whole synopsis, right? Just to get really quick, is that. You know, there's this secret book about that explains something about Satan, if I'm not mistaken, like everything you need to know, and it's in a monastery. So everybody wants to get into that monastery so they can read that book, but it's mm-hmm. a very closed-off monastery. They don't want everybody reading this book. But all of a sudden, um, monks are starting to die one after another, mm-hmm. and the goat, Sean Connery, goes on the cover, right, into the monastery, just to find out that they were very eager to let you read the book, but every time you went, every time you went, to change the page, that was what the poison was. Right. So a lot of the a lot of the stuff that we're talking about now, um, you know, whether it's whoever you are, right? If you're a very diehard Christian, there's there's literally literature that uh, that speaks about stuff that Jesus might have written. You know what I mean? Right. There's also there's also um, uh, we know that these tablets, right? You you claim that they were found in they're in the Vatican. Um, people, one of the one of the craziest things, is like you know, uh, Alexandria's uh, library, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it was burnt, but people say that you know it could have been the Vatican because it comes. It, it was burnt way before they were around. But the truth is, those books were taken. Nobody sat there and let all that knowledge disappear. Right. So we don't know where all that knowledge is, whether it be in that underground library in the Vatican or whatever it is. But there's a reason why there's certain people that have access to that certain knowledge we we don't know if all of a sudden if you, if you just think somebody as crazy as as uh dr greer right when he says that at this moment we're able to power the entire earth with without having to spend a single dollar because of the because of stuff like the egyptians did and shit like that like again we can't prove it but that's what he says what would that do to companies, right? What if you, if what self-sustaining yourself to the point where you don't need anybody? It, it beats the whole purpose of the way we live. And again, it's like, you know, have we have we betrayed who we really were and became just like the society zombie things that just walk around every day and doing the certain things that are not part of our nature, you know? Right. There's a reason why we don't use a lot of our brain, right? There's a, there's a reason why... Stuff like that excites us, right? Like, there's a reason why humans are so excited about the prospect of space, um, the prospect of of continuing to learning shit. We always looking, we always looking and yearning for more knowledge, but it's 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 always compromised. It's always like, don't read that book, or this is crazy, this is not good. You know, uh, sometimes people will will have an argument about like whether the book is real or not, but they they can't take your book and my book and put them together and find a common ground in the middle. But, you know. Yeah, no, and Audrey put up a, a good point. Conformity is death, right? 
this doing this is an easy way to control people doing it in that way in that sense right yeah no i agree i just you know i the the idea of this one specific place right like the birth the birth the entire planet's um mm. cognizant evolutionary well giant leap of you know whether it be technology, you know, astrology, medicine, all that stuff, it's it's crazy. Like just as a concept. It's, I'm not saying it's wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong, but as a concept, it's crazy. It's wild. It's absolutely wild, but I think it's getting to the point now where we're finding out so many things. I think it's kind of hard to deny it. Yeah. So here's <laughs> here's you want to hear something crazy that's gonna drive you nuts right now. Hmm. So I went down I went down to um like this crazy path right rabbit hole bro black black ops of conspiracy. Hmm. So you know that um, Hermes on his tablets he talks about like he's aware of the different dimensions right right yeah There's yeah nine, yeah, yeah. nine dimensions right mm -hmm. science has almost kind of proven that but. So here, so here's the funny thing. Somebody had this theory, and I thought it was phenomenal, right? We see what's in front of us, correct? Right? Like mm -hmm. we can't, we're not, we might be interdimensional beings, but we, we don't have the access to it right now. Maybe we just don't have our third eye. I don't know. We just we see what's in front of us. The concept of ghosts, beasts, all these crazy things. Right, are mm. our concepts of of you know that we that people have said they've seen that they're scared of and stuff like that. Usually, when everybody comes up with same stories, might be something true, right? Especially we take ghosts for example. Sure. So the theory was that some people still have the ability, not knowingly, like that they're able to see through dimensions, and usually these things that we see are just we're not aware of them because they're different dimensional beasts, items, ghosts, humans. I don't know what they are, right? Mm -hmm. So so then the person responds to that person. He's like, yeah, but why would they be violent, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of ghost stories are they're very rare. You hear ghost stories that they're sweet and it's your grandmother. It's always somebody who's pissed off that can't get to the afterlife. Right, so, basically right. the, so basically what we're saying is that imagine right now, right? If you open your door and you saw something that you don't know what it is, you'll be scared. Your first reaction to be is like, how do I protect myself? Right. The same thing would be from them. So we we they might they might look at a different um a different dimensional being and they will basically uh you know they will basically freak out the same way. So that I think that I thought that was kinda as a concept was kinda nuts. Like when you see something that's paranormal, it's basically like a different dimensional beast that you both scare each other. And once you make that connection, I think you're always gonna have that connection. Yeah, I mean, it even touches on it. Like, if you start start to look at the the myths, the legends, whatever you want to call them, of these emerald tablets, like the information that's on them specifically, right? Mm -hmm. About how to um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say intertwine, but how to look into these different areas, right? Okay. How to look into these different uh dimensions and different um times and places of being and, and whatnot right so mm -hmm. and i think that was part of the the knowledge that was taken from um from atlantis specifically so here's the thing though why did he choose emerald because i think it's really hard to fuck it up is it? I don't know. What's the hardness level of Emerald? I know that we're running out of it. Yep. As a planet. You know what I mean? But that's... Yeah, I don't know. It has to have some type of uh, meaning to it. Isn't it crazy that they use a green light? Uh, oh, damn. I don't want to... I don't want to give the spoilers, but there's a piece of jewelry in the new movie, right, that is that is the color of green. I haven't seen it yet. So emeralds a seven and a half to an eight on a ten okay. ten spot. Hmm. 
I know I've said this before. Do you know what? Do you do you, you know they had a um, those Egyptians and Greeks had a really big obsession with crystals too. Yeah, big yeah, obsession. they do. Because I think I think as much as I rag on people with crystals, though, I think there is something there to them. I don't know what it is. I mean, like I know for example that um, quartz is a electrical conductor, but like the other ones, I don't know. I haven't really dug into it that much, right? Just for so so here, this you know uh, sapphire, right? Like they use it in watches. Um, mm. Rubies. The the crazy thing about it is like you know the the obsession. Like for example, the Greeks, the word amethyst means mm -hmm. amethystos, right? Which means you can't get drunk. Greek Greek elite were drinking out of amethyst cups to to maintain sobriety and 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 enjoy drinking throughout the night. Like it's. I remember you mentioning that before. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the word means. Like that's exactly where it comes from. And then you also have like. You know, um, my favorite is uh, like the Lemurians, like where mm. Microsoft has been able to embed like whole stories in them. You know what I mean? Like laser yeah. and stuff in them. So it's it's pretty cool. But, you know, and then the kind of like talking about technology, like going back to the original subject with Toth or not going back to the original subject, bringing up Toth again, kind of going full circle with it. Yeah. You have a lot of these places like Gobekli Tepe that were we can't do now with the precision yeah. and the tools that they used, right? They did, it's almost like they did it with lasers. And even, do you know about the Coral Castle? I was, okay, so I'm, I was going to bring it up. I actually brought that up to a conversation I was having with uh, Audrey. Because mm -hmm. uh, because the Coral Castle is fucking phenomenal, right? Right. Do you, so I don't know if you want to go into the story, but I am, I am, I'm well versed because I think it's phenomenal. And I think... It brings out a point that is that is talked about a lot in the ancient times as well about everything being a vibration. Yeah. Right. So the the <laughs> guy who built it, um, he said something very interesting. Like when somebody asked, because somebody asked him, like, "How are you doing this by yourself?" Did you, did you ever see what his answer was to that question? Uh he did. He yeah. He he left he left the actual device into his no, fucking he garage. Said, yeah, but he said that he found out the secrets of the Egyptians. Correct. Yeah, that was his answer. Yeah, that was his answer. That and there's answer. certain yeah. things there that don't make sense mechanically. Like you, they well, have this door. The door is eight tons, and you right. push and it with to... finger, and it opens. Okay, so that's a great point. Do you remember that they try to change the door? They couldn't do it. Uh, they couldn't do it. They couldn't find it. Right now, you move, you push it with a finger, it ch it, it go out, it, like it spins. No it problem. Rotates. But when they yeah. changed it, yeah, it wouldn't. But the crazy part is that he left this little machine that basically is like everything in the planet has frequencies. If you if, if you were able to manipulate that frequency, you could do whatever you want. And everybody said that they were just seeing these fucking corals just flying all around every night. Like he was. Yeah, he was there was. So basically, there was a these group of boys that snuck to where. Yeah. To snuck to where he was, and they said mm -hmm. they saw the stones floating. That's where mm -hmm. that comes from. All for some sixteen-year-old cousin, bro. Yeah, that's love the him. Some crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If yeah, you're in Florida, Edward, you should go check it out. That shit is fire. Yeah, it really is. And they moved it. They had to move it, from what I understand. But yeah, no, Edward, no, no, he it's moved still it. Miami. No, no, no he moved there. it though. No, 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 it's still there. Hold on, I thought I read one time that he built it somewhere else. No, I don't think that's accurate. I could be wrong, um, but I don't I'm think. looking it up right now. Any more alcohol? Yeah, perpetual motion holder is what the tool was called. Yeah, he originally Which, built way, it. In, to, yeah. No, he originally built it in Florida City. That's where it is. No, it's not. No, it's uh, Miami now, right? Like yeah, Miami. it's in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. The castle remained in Florida, Florida City until 36, 1936 when Leeds the builder, decided to move and take the castle with him. Its second that's and final fucking, location. That's crazy. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, he moved it from Florida City to actually have the address. And I am just out of curiosity going to see how far it went. But maybe this guy did crack the code, right? What if... So that's how they built the pyramids. The story with the 
um, emerald tablets, right? Is that they were the secrets or they are the secrets to um, alchemy. Correct. Right. So in alchemy, what if this is a part of that? You know, what if this was he, he figured it out in that sense? You know, there's a, I don't know how this if this correlates quite a lot, but there's a book called The Hiram Key. I don't know yeah. if you. Mm-hmm. So they talk about masonry and a lot of the stuff like, you know, dates back then as well. So a lot of this. Yeah, it was on my then, it was required of me to read it when I first became a mason. Oh I did, yeah, I, so I was uh, I didn't know you were a mason actually, but mm-hmm. um, a friend of mine who is a mason, uh, really cool dude, uh, he gave me that book. So that's like the book you read before you go become a mason, and it was just what yeah. a fun, one of the greatest book ever. Yeah, yeah, you have to read that, and then you read a, another book, which I'm not going to say the name of it, but you can only get it through the lodge. And basically, it talks about the origination story of masonry and where it came about. Mm-hmm. And um, those are two of the things that um, I had to read before yeah. I became a mason. Yeah, I think so, I'm yeah. just weird. I think I'm just weird because we're talking about yeah, Hiram of Biff. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Hiram of Biff, King Solomon, Hiram of Tyree. Solomon, That's yeah. where. It, yeah. Yeah. I thought he was saying, wait, what? He's a Mason? And I'm like, bro, that's what I think he, I think he is saying. CIA tattooed. One thing he's going to tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah. I, 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 I've got to break the fourth wall real quick. Motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's certain things you can't discuss because of the, the oaths you've taken. But yeah, I this is news to me. Like, come on, you gotta see my face. Yeah, I've been a bit. Like, come on, I, I, <laughs> I've been a Mason since I was 19. I had to write a letter yeah, to we, the Grand Council to get permission because normally they don't let people in until they're 21. But the 21. guy who sponsored yeah, but the guy who sponsored yeah. me, he believed in me so much that he had me. I had to write a letter, he had to write a letter, and then the leader of the lodge that I was brought into had to write a letter to the Grand Council and I got approved. I'm 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 a Mason. You're allowed to say. Well, it, well, you got to understand that. Scott, okay, so there's a difference between American Masonry and, and Scottish Rite Masonry. So the levels. Are- there's no such thing as American Rite Masonry. You have York Rite and Scottish Rite. That's it. Yeah. Okay. York Rite, but York Rite is what tends to be the traditional version that Americans subscribe to. Correct. Right. Even though Scottish is the older version. Exactly. We're we're, we're, we're going to discuss. This off screen. I'm not going to ever ask you to discuss this on stream. And of course, I'm never going to ask you to break your vows, but I'm going to go ahead and step back and <laughs> Alright, sorry about that stream. I'm going to let the fellas finish it. You know, do what they do. So, so to your, you know what? That's that's exactly like I've had, I have a ton of friends who are mm. who are Masons and I've, I know the second book you speak of as well. I've been yeah. able to I've been able to read a lot, and the Hiram key was actually phenomenal, and it ties in yeah. kind of like, you know what I mean? Like it's it's, and I got this. I actually recently just got the second Hiram key, like the second one. I want to see what that's about. I heard it's it's just a continuation, but what if? Yeah, good stuff, man. I didn't know. See, yeah, man, the guy yeah, was so guy. shit. <laughs> Again, I keep things close to the chest, man. <laughs> You don't have to, bro. Don't worry. I won't show you. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, but yeah, no, no, I mean, this this is a subject we can continue to go on. This is why Joe Rogan does, like, long-form podcasts, right? I would like – this was, like, a good introduction and, a, like, a 40,000 overview of this subject. I would like to break this subject down more into more detail with another show. Um, we sure. can either do that next week or we can do um, – what up, y'all? I'm I, mad I late. Yeah, you're late. I'm not covering everything over again. Even though, <laughs> yeah, it was an hour and 44 minutes. <laughs> yeah, you you can catch part two. Uh, I, if you part, yeah, unless something extreme wild happens, we could do part two next week. Um, but yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it's cool. This was this was a complete overview. I mean, we 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 talked about this quite a lot earlier, but um, you want to hear one of my craziest philosophies like not the craziest uh, theories ever sure i think that in machu picchu that big runway was for alien spacecraft here's my craziness right 
And I feel like all these different places in the earth, whether it was, you know, Mayans, Aztecs, Egyptians, Greeks, were able to communicate with each other even faster than we do now. Mm -hmm. And they all have one obsession, right? They all obsess with what's in the sky. For example, Greeks built the Parthenon in a place where birds don't fly over, right? Like it's like so much cosmic energy, nothing, nothing passes through there. And the way they built the actual columns, they built them with like small ditches so the energy could flow down to the to the point. Right. The yeah. Egyptians are are they're building all those things like to the point, right? Using probably that vibration technology that we have from the from the coral castle. And then you have the Aztecs who were, who were, you know, they were doing the exact same thing as the Egyptians, but in a more brutal way. It was like, what an honor to be sacrificed for that culture, right? If you were sacrificed, it was an honor. And right. they just, it, you know, and then they were wiped off. And then you have the Machu the, um, the Incas or, the, you know, up in Machu Picchu. So everything was somehow connected, like the same way we are now. We just right. don't know. And, and I got into, like, I know you like the show, but I got into... Uh, America Uncovered. Under I love that show. Yes. Yo, that Walters. shit is a mind fuck. Now, if if 40% of that shit is real, I know yeah. nothing. Right. It's crazy. <clears throat> Have you gotten to the Knights Templar episodes yet? Uh not not on that one, but I've watched a lot about the Knights Templar. Wait, yeah. wait till you get to the Knights Templar episodes. Oh yeah, they're pretty dope. So that's a recommendation for everybody to go watch. Yeah, so uh, that's a hundred percent. Yeah, it's on YouTube. You can find it on YouTube. But yeah, nice. The, the Knights Templar episodes are very compelling. No, I'm with you. Just I'm with you. What's your recommendation, buddy? Uh you know what? I think everybody should read the Hiram Key. I think it's a phenomenal book. That's a solid one. Yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. Yeah. But yeah, so. Um, that's a great recommendation, actually. But yeah, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and stop here. We did a high level overview. We did talk about some random stuff as well that kind of related, kind of didn't. Um, but we will get I think we should get more into detail on this subject next. Sure. Week. I don't want to. Maybe, we'll maybe we could talk a little bit about what's in the, the actual text. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because you know what, though, that needs a whole nother show in itself, though. There's just so yeah, much sure, stuff on sure. there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, so we can get into that, uh, and we'll do part two next week. I love it. All right, everybody. Well, hey, we appreciate you hanging out. Uh, don't forget to tune in next Thursday, or not next Thursday, uh, tomorrow, as in tomorrow Thursday. I know, Vic, stop yelling at me. He's yelling at me in the background. Um, I know my days, fucker. Love you. Um, but, yeah, so tomorrow night is the Detention Podcast, where it will be uh, – I don't know how many people you got on there now. 12, 15, 37. I'm usually at work when you guys are on. 37 so people. Have, uh, they're, they're all drunk. We have, we have four, right? But they count as 32. Oh, okay. Got you. Oh, I mean, Gus, Gus himself has like well, we, 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 we may have a special guest tomorrow. We're not 100% sure. Somebody may have to bow out. But that's your cue to tune in and see who may or may not not be a potential special guest on rotation tv tomorrow night on the tension podcast but fellas can i can i just tell you from the bottom of my heart i love what you guys did tonight like there were so many times i wanted to jump in um i i do want to say hermes trace magistus is the actual pronunciation every time you said it frank i was ready to jump to the screen but yeah whatever name trace magistus, not the right, right pronunciation magistus. yeah <laughs> <laughs> good night everybody Finish us up, Mr. Host. Thank, Wait, you, thank you, everybody, for watching. Take us home, Frank. Before, ahead, make sure you do turn in tomorrow. Um, they always have a good, fun show. Um, that's the beauty about the whole channel. We have a lot of diversity. You know, me and Frank are a little more nerdy, so we enjoy these conversations. But I love watching the Thursday podcast. Um, they have a good Tuesday vibe. Night. So. Tuesday night is completely different. So, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take three minutes, Frank. I'm sorry. I know I know. I watched I watched the Tuesday night show, mm -hmm. loved it, but but I have thoughts, so I'm gonna get in trouble because I was told I just they had a very good segment and I I'm gonna take five minutes I promise no more than five minutes I want your opinion on this okay, mm -hmm. so they had a segment here and I think and I and I was gonna address it because I I had a lot of opinions on it but uh, I believe Audrey played a video right where the content of the video was basically a gentleman 
yes, he did it in a very in a very weird way, right? Mm-hmm. Like he, I guess he wasn't as articulate as he should be, but he was basically saying define roles in a in a relationship. Mm-hmm. A man should be paying, right? Yeah. Um so like, yeah, I know, but but the response that the two fellas had was kind of kind of threw me off. They were very like setting women backwards for years and stuff like that. So here's what I would say to that. And then I'll pass it over to you and then you can shut us down too, right? Okay. If I'm asking somebody out, I'm asking them for the companionship, right? I'm right. courting you. So while I'm courting you, it's my responsibility because I've I've asked for that time, right? You didn't you didn't ask me. I asked you to come to, to for the companionship. So I will pay. That's that's just how I see it. Mm-hmm. Correct? Yeah. No. I agree. Now, right? <laughs> oh, there she goes. There she goes. Second, second, I'm here second. to moderate. Second, what I think what the what the what the miss was with Mo and it was that they they heard pay and they were just like, oh, that's that's crazy. But my beef is that the progression should be very simple. You court the lady, you take care of the lady, you show her that you can protect her and take care of her. In return, she's gonna she's gonna return that favor too, right? You're gonna be always protected from her side and everything, and that's how you grow. Now, what happens is once you guys get into that relationship and the relationship is flourishing and everything is good, then you know your money and her money become one money. And you start investing together and you're growing together. I remember girls who were back in high school, like back in New York, would they would slide their credit cards to their men to pay, right, just so they don't make them look weak. That's mm-hmm. a ride or die chick, but I think what the what the mentality where Mo was like, well, then it's all financial. And it's not financial. It's like you were very scared to admit. Like I don't understand what that the thought process there was because I know Vic might jump on any second now because he had thoughts too. But <laughs> I just didn't. So, I just I, here here's here's how I look at it, right? So a thousand years ago, if you were courting a chick or you were marrying a chick, you kicked in her door, you threw a deer on the table, and it said, "Look, I'll be able to provide for you," right? Things have changed now. Now, granted, I still do that. No. Uh, I haven't been hunting in a well, few years, but gators you know, and all. Gators and all. I can <laughs> it all too. Um, but yeah, so it's it's different different pages of the same book nowadays, right? Yeah. It's it's the man. I, I and this is not demeaning women in any way, but I feel like it's the man's responsibility to take care of the woman as much as possible, and because there are times where the woman's going to have to take care of a man. In a different way, though, right? Like women are that emotional support that men need. Most men are emotionally fucked, and we don't realize it until we're with a woman who's able to right. say, "Hey, you sh- you're fucked mentally," right? Yep. And I think that is, <laughs> yeah. See, <laughs> but um, yeah, no. Like when I was dating my wife, I don't think she paid for an outing for us for months. And it was just something random where she was just like, no, I want to do this for you. Every other time, dates, getting hair done, nails done. That was all me because that I was providing for my woman. So here's where I think people got confused, though. And I love that you said that, uh, Frankie. So I think the I think the, the ideology was like, it's very one-sided, but... Or, or women wouldn't take, wouldn't, wouldn't like you, or wouldn't stay with you if you stop providing. And I actually had this conversation with. I'm gonna throw her under the bus, no eye holes, because I thought he, I thought she had some really valid points. So we were talking a little bit about it. So what happened is, is that, and I've seen this, right? You could rock with your girl. It's, it's to see that, that, that motivation to be that person too. There's no way. If you up every day, you hustle and you're trying to do your thing, but you just might not be making a lot of money or, you know, but you're showing that improvement. You know, she knows that if a light bulb needs to be changed, it gets changed. She knows that if she, that she'd be protected, nobody will ever disrespect her. It's not financial. They got so caught up in the fact that right. the guy said you got to pay that. Um, yeah. So I, 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 I was trying really hard not to say shit today, but it was bothering me. It's so, almost you know, unfair to Frank. It's almost yeah. unfair to you to have you speak on it without seeing the video, but I agree with what both of you are saying and where the video started, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure if that's the beginning of it or not, but from where we started the clip, it Actually, did... I'm sorry. Hold on, Vic has Play it, Vic. Play it, play it. Thanks, Frankie. I appreciate it. I know it's kind of hard and you had to run, but uh, it's sorry. okay. I'd rather, have you, I'd rather have you here a little longer. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's perfect. Okay. You've got to understand society and darkness has a plan, and that is for men to become 
more like women and women to become more like men. So traditional values are looked upon as bad. It's not about if you can pay or not. It's about allowing a man to fully be able to provide for you, not just physically and financially, but also emotionally, spiritually, and sexually. Because if you can't do all of those things, your heart knows, and eventually your soul will tell you, you will lose respect for him. And when you lose respect for him, you will lose connection for him. And when you lose connection for him, your body will not be able to open and receive him. And that's when the sexual relationship goes away. Set your standards right now because your heart already knows what it needs to feel completely safe in his presence he has to feel so is that is that, on is that you got to understand mom, something society and facts. darkness has a plan and that so this guy should be writing on emerald tablets just to be real. <laughs> okay <laughs> the, i just i don't know i don't know it, it was it was such a but isn't that great like in a, in a podcast, in a, in a in a show that you guys were doing, that is very fun and very like relationship driven, and we talk. It tends you know, a to be bit, right, right. Sometimes a little sexual and fun and engaging. That a topic came up that I know there were people in the chat that were very like into it to the point like the conversation continued to the next day with me and no eye holes. And I'm not gonna lie, I I spoke to you a little bit about it, Audrey. I was mm-hmm. like, yo, like your thoughts, and then. I actually called Frank and I was like, yo, Frankie, what, what's your thoughts on this? So he kind of had a heads up because I was, I wanted to bring it up and start the show with it, but I was kind of told, yeah. chill out. I mean, but, I'll be honest, know. when I, when I came across the video and I heard that immediately, I almost shut down, like, wait, ready to go off. But if you continue to listen, it's not a financial basis. It's like you guys were saying, being able to provide that support in all aspects to where your woman is comfortable and that's where it flows and if one fails or starts to fail it's almost like a trickle down effect right i shared i shared this in the chat yesterday i had lunch with a friend and they sent me a message they were like oh i'll send you money and i was like what the fuck is wrong with you like i was like i literally asked you to lunch and and there's no there's no friend there's no like relationship there or anything like that right it's just mm-hmm. friends just hanging out but at the same time it's just like we're losing these traditional roles, and I'm I'm okay bringing those back. So, guys, I love you all. I'm sorry I had to bring this up. It was killing me. Modern modern, modern day, day problems, problems, right? So, if uh, you guys are friends, if there isn't any any other expectation, then was she wrong for offering? Yes, she was very wrong. Traditional. So here's the thing. I I think it's polite, but at the same time. It's who you are as a person, right? It's you, it's a, the polite thing to do, but it's it's not Vic, wrong. That person knows me, though. You know what I mean? You, yeah, you know that's, what, I, that's was, what I'm kind of getting. Yeah, at. like you you know you know I ain't no scrub. Like don't don't play me like that. You know what I'm saying? Like and honestly and honestly, most of the time, like this is I'm a very and I wanted to make the distinction is that I'm I'm asking you. Like if you were to be like, yo, you want to get a cup of coffee, I might let you pay. You made the move. Whatever. Fair. But when I'm courting you or with my wife when I wanted to go out and stuff like that, like I was I was asking her for her time. Okay. Right? Yeah. And you it's said like courting like, and your wife, but that situation was a friend. That's not the same scenario. No, I no, understand, but, but at the same but at the same time I asked that, that friend to, to, to hang out. Right? She did. You know? I mean generally, also, yeah. Also, if you're inviting you should be expected to pay. Yeah. No, it's also traditional roles, right? Because mm-hmm. you don't have to be courting a woman in order to protect the woman or provide for the woman. Wow, that's definitely right. I agree with you 100%. I'm glad you said like, that. I'm, I was trying to say that, but I wasn't smart enough to say that. <laughs> yeah, no, but like I am like I was raised southern by my grandfather who was you know, he was born in 1930, very traditional, very old school, right? And it's it's very much like even when I would go out with a friend of mine who also was a girl, she never paid. I, I never let her pay. Right. It was and we were just plutonic, like straight up plutonic. But no matter what, I always paid because that's how Did she I ever afraid. offered to pay. Yeah. OK. And I told her, don't ever do that shit again. I was like, that's disrespectful. And she never did. No. Not yeah, after that, that time. Yeah, I'm with you with that. Like, it's cute. But at the same time, like, have me, you know what's weird? Like, it's like, have some expectations for me. I'm a good man. Right. Have some expectations. Glad we were able to touch on that. Cool. All right. So, 12 so, minutes later. 
Right. I love you guys. <laughs> Audrey, uh, thank you for jumping on. You're a legend. Got it. Um, I know you're learning the back end of the, the whole operation. Uh, we really appreciate you. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Um, I'll admit, uh, me and Frankie were a little more sloppier than usual today. <laughs> we, uh, we've been, it's very entertaining we've been and lot, educational. <laughs> we've been having a lot of fun. And actually, I think, I think, actually, I'm not think. I'm going to force this on um Click on the link tree. We're, oh, absolutely. <laughs> but I am going to force Frankie to get on um, on one of these podcasts, and we're going to do drugs. And then we'll see where we go with that. So, Frank, I'm just letting you right now. And maybe, and maybe you know what? Maybe maybe we'll do it. We'll do it together at a place together. Oh we'll yeah, no, no, no. We'd have to be that one has to be in person. Okay. I'm not doing drugs in this yeah, house. Well, you probably sleep over. On. We'll do it at the crib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cuddle me. No, I, I, it's it's just a plan for you to sell me your kid because she's she's perfect and and adorable. Oh, thanks for the comment. One eight s e x dot x y z. Oh, how girls for me? Here we go. Hey, it's about that time. When they're uh, wait, that, let let me chime in. That's the second time in two days that this person is sending us hot girl pics. We already told you send them. No, we we'll vet all the hot girl pics. <laughs> Tell you if you're really as hot as you think you are. And then well, we'll you know it's a. We we know it's a bot, but that means you're getting somewhere. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. We love you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, next week, I don't know if we're gonna do part two next week. I'm actually gonna try we'll to do talk part about two it. when when you and I are on drugs and together. And also, I'm Ooh. not gonna be here next week. So uh, maybe Audrey, maybe you and Audrey and no, I host can find the subject together. Oh fuck yeah, I'm down. Got so it. So I'll watch from Dubai, guys. We love you. Right. Uh, peace. Peace. Watch tomorrow night.